Director Comey, I appreciate your willingness to appear before the committee today, and more importantly, I thank you for your dedicated service and leadership to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Your appearance today speaks to the trust we have built over the years, and I'm looking forward to a very open and candid discussion today. I'd like to remind my colleagues that we will reconvene in closed session at 1 p.m. today, and I ask that you reserve for that venue any questions that might get into classified information. Uh, the director has been very gracious with his time, but the vice chairman and I have worked out a very specific timeline for his commitment to be on the Hill, so we will do everything we can to meet that agreement. The Senate Select Committee on Intelligence exists to certify for the other 85 members of the United States Senate and the American people that the intelligence community is operating lawfully and has the necessary authorities and tools to accomplish its mission and keep America safe. Part of our mission, beyond the oversight we continue to provide to the intelligence community and its activities, is to investigate Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. elections. The committee's work continues. This hearing represents part of that effort. Jim, allegations have been swirling in the press for the last several weeks, and today's your opportunity to set the record straight. Yesterday, I read with interest your statement for the record, and I think it provides some helpful details surrounding your interactions with the President. It clearly lays out your understanding of those discussions, actions you took following each conversation, and your state of mind. I very much appreciate your candor, and I think it's helpful as we work through to determine the ultimate truth behind possible Russian interference in the 2016 elections. Your statement also provides texture and context to your interactions with the President <clears throat> from your vantage point and outlines a strained relationship. The American people need to hear your side of the story, just as they need to hear the President's descriptions of events. These interactions also highlight the importance of the Committee's ongoing investigation. Our experienced staff is interviewing all relevant parties and some of the most sensitive intelligence in our country's possession. We will establish the facts, separate from rampant speculation, and lay them out for the American people to make their own judgment. Only then will we, as a nation, be able to move forward and to put this episode to rest. There are several outstanding issues not addressed in your statement that I hope you'll clear up for the American people today. Did the President's request for loyalty, your impression, that, uh, that the one-on-one -on -one dinner of January 27th was, and I quote, at least in part, an effort to create some sort of patronage relationship, or is March 30th phone call asking uh, what you could do to lift the cloud of Russia investigation in any way, alter your approach or the FBI's investigation into General Flynn, or the broader investigation into Russia and possible links to the campaign? In your opinion, did potential Russian efforts to establish links with the individuals in the Trump orbit rise to the level we could define as collusion, or was it a counterintelligence concern? There's been a significant public speculation about your decision making related to the Clinton email investigation. Why did you decide publicly uh, to publicly announce FBI's recommendations that the Department of Justice not pursue criminal charges? You have described it as a choice between a bad decision and a worse decision. The American people need to understand the facts behind your action. This committee is uniquely suited to investigate Russia's interference in the 2016 elections. We also have a, a unified bipartisan approach to what is a highly charged partisan issue. Russian activities during 2016 election may have been aimed at one party's candidate, but as my colleague Senator Rubio says frequently, in 2018 and 2020, it could be aimed at anyone at home or abroad. My colleague Senator Warner and I have worked in, have worked to stay in lockstep on this investigation. We've had our differences on approach at times, but I've constantly stressed that we need to be a team 
and I think Senator Warner agrees with me. We must keep these questions above politics and partisanship. It's too important to be tainted by anyone trying to score political points. With that, again, I welcome you, Director, and I turn to the Vice Chairman for any comments he might have.